sea ice, which is melting at a rate that the Arctic Ocean now sea ice, which is melting at a rate that the Arctic Ocean now increasingly is exposed. In five years, scientists predict we will have the first ice-free Arctic summer. Okay, so thanks for clicking on to the 52nd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Everybody, hope everybody is well and enjoying their weekend so far. That was a prediction made and mentioned by John Kerry back in 2009 that by 2014 the Arctic would be free of Arctic sea ice. So this was a tweet here um, yesterday by Tony Heller saying that the Arctic sea ice extent is um, at its highest level in 17 years and almost as high as 1995. So a lot of scare stories put out back in 2009-10 of the Arctic being void of sea ice by the time we reach 2014-2015 uh, and even as early as 2013. And yet we've seen um, you know, a considerable change around. Yes, the Arctic is warmer than average for the overall year, and indeed, particularly so during the winter season, but during the summer season, it is the opposite. And this is actually one of the coldest Arctic summers in several decades. And I believe um, May was uh, the coldest on record within the Arctic region here. So, of course, we are living in an age where there is a lot of scare stories out there with regards to climate. And we are at a tipping point. We are in uncharted territory and whatnot and you know i try to show you the unbiased and balanced view of the state of our planet how much has the earth warmed since 1900 apparently it's approximately one degree celsius and we have seen a rise really since the little ice age um, but of course, record heat is is by far outweighing record cold at the moment. But we are in an interglacial period where we are seeing, um, you know, you know, a warming phase in Earth's history. This is um quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of the material I'm going to show you is courtesy of Richard Trott. So I do appreciate Richard's um input and you know providing me with some very interesting and useful information for these videos he, he is a large contributor contributor to gav's weather vids but uh, richard has kindly uh, provided me with some material that is very much worth showing you here on marfoganweather.com and youtube as well um so central england temperature of course there is a, a large um, you know, consensus that this is the longest um, data set or, or at least one of the longest data sets. I believe it is the longest data set on Earth with records going all the way back to 1659. And this is a very interesting correlation between carbon dioxide emissions and the central England temperature. So this is, of course, up until 2009. But the point in this is that we see a dramatic rise in carbon dioxide, i.e. the black line here showing the rise in CO2 levels all the way up to this level here. So it's, you know, essentially off the chart, um, you know, the rise in CO2. But then this line here is actually the temperature. And you can see here a steady rise, yes, between um, 1659, where the temperature is what, about what nine celsius and it's risen to about what just shy of of 10 celsius on average between 9, 1659 and 2009 here but the, the the point of this is that the co2 rise the dramatic rise is not being reflected in the temperature rise so there's no dispute in the fact that the temperature has risen albeit slight the rise in co2 and the rise in temperature is not correlating so it is not fitting with the overall consensus that co2 is warming the planet this is a geological time scale here and of course we are right at the very end uh, known as the holocene um, time frame and you can see here the the kind of tealy color or light blue color 
is representative of temperature and the purpley color is representative of CO2. Probably hard to see this, but this is basically going back thousands of years. And you can see here that the temperature of, of the Earth was considerably warmer in multiple periods in Earth's history. And you can see here, this is through ice core data, through um, tree ring information as well. We know that you know, there has been a lot warmer times. And this is the problem that we have is we are only being shown the period of the last few hundred years, if that. Now, individual heat records, in a sense, are kind of meaningless because records fall all the time. But we only have a record that is correlating to a minuscule, you know, percentage of time. Whereas, you know, how do we know that the temperatures that we're seeing now, the records that we're seeing now, is anything particularly out of the ordinary? Is it the highest we've ever seen? 50, 51, 52, 53 Celsius. Like I've said in previous videos, folks, we aren't smashing through barriers that we haven't really seen on, on the face of the planet before. So 54 Celsius appears to be right around the cusp, the ceiling, in terms of the maximum temperature, air temperature measured on the face of the planet. Now, there has been occasions where 55 Celsius was achieved, 56 Celsius was achieved, and these records, uh, you know, dating back to the early, early 1900s, has been dismissed as being inaccurate. But the point of the matter is that we are not seeing temperatures that we haven't essentially seen on planet Earth before. Yes, city temperature records are fallen, but let's remember that, you know, we've got far bigger urban areas now than we've ever had. The planet is, you know, more populated than it ever has been. So that element will definitely have an, a, an effect, a warming effect on the planet. There's no question about that. Have massive cities like Delhi, Tokyo, even Moscow, London, Paris, these cities have all expanded in the last 50 plus years. So in a sense, with climate change and the warming that we're seeing, why are we not seeing temperatures way higher than what they were recorded back in the you know, 70s, 80s and, and 90s? That's the question that I would like to ask. But this here, geological time scale, concentration of CO2 and temperature fluctuations, says a big deal it, it offers a counter argument remember what i said as well that i'm not necessarily totally dismissing the co2 argument i'm not necessarily saying that these people on tv meteorologists climate scientists that believe that co2 is warming the planet i'm not necessarily saying that that is completely and utterly incorrect what i'm saying i'm saying that we have got plenty of material out there. We've got plenty of scientists that have a very good counter argument against this to show that, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, is it completely, you know, off the scale out of the ordinary? It, it opens up so many questions. So this is another um, chart sent by, by Richard Trott showing over the past, what, 300 plus thousand years this is vostok ice core data from antarctica and you can see here this is the current period and of course the correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature now antarctica has been exceptionally mild this winter but yet we've seen the coldest temperature since 2017 not just in antarctica by the way but at anywhere on the face of the planet now yes arctic sea ice and antarctic sea ice should i say is at its lowest levels on record for the month of July. So July is in a sense like January, only it's in the Southern Hemisphere, winter of course. So it'd be like having the lowest Arctic sea ice for the middle of winter, for January, on record. That's what we're seeing at the moment in Antarctica. But look at this here, folks. We've seen these rises and falls in temperature before. This is where we're at right now. This is where we're at over a thousand year, hundred thousand years ago, should I say, this is where we're at, you know, 200,000 plus years ago. 
over 300,000 years ago. You can see the rise and fall in temperature as well as that. We can see it also in carbon dioxide concentration as well. Now, the key take home for this particular chart here is look at the massive rise in CO2 around the year 2020. And yet, where's the temperature going? It's actually going the other way. It's dropping, as you can see here. Why is that the case? Who knows? But it's not carbon dioxide, according to this chart here. The carbon dioxide is through the roof. It's way up beyond the ceiling of the chart. But yet the temperature has stopped like it did in this period, in this period, in this period. So this goes against what scientists are telling us. Okay, so there was a meteorologist from the Met Office that came up on the video a couple of days ago saying about the claims that were being made. I know people were saying that the ground temper temperature was being measured and whatnot. And that is ridiculous. He did make mention of it being a ridiculous claim that temperatures were not being measured the same way that they've always done. He, he made mention, and I'm not going to mention his name because I do like the guy. I, I do have a great deal of respect um, for what he does, so I'm not going to say the name. But he made mention that all these temperatures in Southern Europe over the last 10 to 14 days, breaking records here and there, including Rome, including Palermo, temperatures were being measured by a Stevenson screen. And according to our friend Harry Hardrada, the Palermo Observatory Station, where 47 Celsius was measured, was on a rooftop. On a rooftop. And this isn't a standard weather site, not anymore, and shouldn't be used to measure climatic trends. It's about as valid as my head held Kesto thermometer. Interesting, okay? I also noticed that apparently the room temperature of 42.9 Celsius, which was deemed accurate, was also in the balcony of, of, a, of, a, of a rooftop or a balcony in the center of room. So that is not gonna be particularly accurate either, in my opinion. So this is this is what I'm saying, folks. This is what we have to consider with every I'm not dismissing the fact that we had, you know, record breaking heat across southern portions of Europe here, but is it smashing through, you know, barriers that we haven't seen before? No. So climate change on foot, a very, very flippant retweet that I put out a few days ago. But what is, are we looking at here? We're looking at a guy that is setting fires in Sicily. So can I get the video up? So this is a police helicopter overhead watching this guy setting fires deliberately. And we're being told that climate change is worsening wildfires around the planet. And this, folks, is not true. Nature always finds a way to replenish its land. In other words, fires. Fires replenish. It's a natural replenishment of the land areas. And what we're seeing is people are causing the fires. The fire that we've seen in northwestern Scotland back a month or so ago was started by per a person. And yes, wildfires are not unusual even in Scotland in dry periods. We get dry periods all the time. And what we had was barbecues that aren't being disposed of properly, campfires. These aspects are man-made, but it's not climate change. It's not making fires worse or more frequent. They're simply being started unnaturally. And then, of course, with the right conditions, the land catches fire very, very easily indeed. So wildfires are being, are being blamed for on climate change. Also, another aspect is a lot of buildings, a lot of towns, resorts are being built on areas that, you know, 50 years ago were in the middle of vegetation, were in the middle of forests. You put people in nature uh, and wildfires begin, you see more in the way of burn, burning down of uh, and death and all these aspects. 
So again, that's another interesting counter argument here with regards to climate change.